Vercel just solved one of my biggest pain points with serverless. TLDR, lambdas die once you send a response. Wait until lets you run async code after the response. Think defer from go. I got shit for the think defer from go thing, and most of the shit I got is totally fair, but I want to showcase what this is and why it's so cool. Because yes, this existed in other places before. If you're using VPSs, this isn't even a thing you thought about, but once you get into the magic world of serverless scaling stuff, this is magical. First, we need to discuss this part, though, that lambdas die once you send a response, because there has been a lot of, again, reasonable pushback from everyone's favorite anti Vercelli in here, Dax, which is that you can technically do this in Lambda, but that's a big technically. There are three different ways you can call a Lambda, synchronously, asynchronously, and via polling calls. These all behave very, very differently. In asynchronous operations, the caller places the event on an internal queue, which is then processed by the Lambda function, versus with a synchronous invocation, the caller waits for the function to complete an execution and the function can then return a value. So for almost every single person using Lambda to serve traffic, like through an API gateway or through CloudFront, they're all using the synchronous invocation method, which has the catch of once it's returned, it dies. So if you want to bind a web service or an API or a gateway to Lambda, you're almost certainly doing it through the synchronous invocation because that's the easiest way to connect them. Once you get into the asynchronous invocation land and you're building an event queue and system around it, now you have to attach that to the web layer yourself. And that sucks to do. I know that because we've tried doing it ourselves and it is not fun. You need your own way to move the request to the Lambda and then get the response out. Because once a Lambda has sent a response directly to the web request that started it, it dies. That sucks. So if you're using Lambda, almost all of the ways that are recommended, you have this problem. If you switch to streaming and hack in certain response methods, or you build your own asynchronous layer on top of it, sure, you can make Lambda do this, but I've never seen anybody get this working successfully. Even Dax himself tried to help us get this working and gave up. And it just doesn't, it's not a good time. <laughs> it's really not. As such, I want to showcase what this is and how we actually use it, because it's really cool. And make sure you stick through to the end for this one, because there's a really cool demo where the CEO of Vercel himself shows how to use this to re-implement server components without even needing React, which is super, super cool. Anyways, I built a quick little demo. I know, Theo coding in a video, been a while, right? I, I'm just really excited about this, okay? In this demo, we have a very simple thing. We have a web page that has a form in it. This form has an input that has an element name and it has a submit button and it's bound to the action, do some work. If you already know about server actions, check out my other videos about them. They're really cool, especially for stuff like this. Then we look up here and we have my do some work function. It's use server so that this will become a pipe from the client to the server. Use server means the client can send things to the server. Use client means the server can send JavaScript to the client. Generally, if you think about it that way, it makes this much easier. So use server allows for the client to post to the server to do something. In this case, some work. Specifically, I made a really fancy database. I know, revolutionary tech here, db.txt. And we're writing the name of the person who submitted their name here. Then we append that to the file and then we redirect. You might have noticed something here though. This is an async function and we didn't await. If I await this, totally fine. We go here, we'll put uh, Theo as my name, submit. And it redirected fine, hello Theo, because writing to that file is really fast. It's not gonna block for long. But if I switch to append with delay and we go back up here, we see append with delay has this block for a bit where it blocks for a thousand milliseconds. Let's make that 5,000. So that's gonna block for five seconds and then it's going to append to the file. So we go back here, Theo2, so we know it's the second time. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting for that work to get done. And now we're here with Theo2. And if we check here in the text file, we do indeed have Theo2 here. The obvious solution is, well, if we don't need that data to be there for the page load, can't we just delete the await here? Let's do it. We go back here. We do Theo3 this time, and it loads immediately. We go to the text file, it's not there yet. Close, open, close, open. Cool, it finally appeared in the text file. The catch is if you did this on Lambda through Vercel or on Lambda yourself, there's a good chance this append will just fail and not happen because this isn't blocking. This whole instance can just die. <laughs> and this write might not ever happen. Hopefully you're starting to see why this would suck. So how do we work around that? We finally have a solution that doesn't involve blocking the user on some additional work, which you're curious why you would ever do this. Ever heard of logging? This is so useful for things like logging, like adding data to your database that doesn't block users, getting a response to your user faster, and letting all this work go on in the background. So if we look at the API here, it's actually quite simple. We import wait 
until from at Vercel slash functions. Then we wrap our call with wait until. I think we have to install the Vercel functions package first. So we'll do that. Bun add Vercel functions, bun dev again. Import this guy. Wait until. And I think we can literally just wrap this as is. Ta-da. And now we can be sure that that code will actually run when we do our input here. So I'll do the 4 Submit. We redirect immediately. The wait until is being run. So if this was running in a Lambda, they're keeping this alive for us now, which is huge. I don't want to go too into detail of how it works because honestly, I don't even fully know how it works. I've been told a little bit of info a long time before. Vercel's done a lot of work on the orchestration of their Lambda stuff. Right now, when you hit Vercel, the first layer you hit isn't immediately Lambda on AWS. They have their own distributed layer on top that then routes you to the correct Lambda with the correct code to run. They're building their own orchestration on top, which means obviously they're going to be limited by a lot of limitations that exist in Lambda. Theoretically, in the future, they can move off Lambda because all of the requests are coming through their layer now. Their layer can now make a connection to the Lambda that isn't a traditional connection. It can use the async processing and use event management. So uh, this needs to be diagrammed. Diagram fan are eaten good. So if we have a user, which obviously users are circles and services are squares and rectangles. So we have our user and we have our server. In traditional world, the user sends a request to the server and then the server sends a response to the user, which is great until there's too many users and too few servers. Then you start running into problems. Even if you have multiple servers, you need something in front to do the redirection and all of that work. So in the case of something like Lambda, instead of a server here, you'd have a really thin layer that would be a gateway usually something on AWS, so some form of gateway. And this gateway will route traffic to the correct lambdas, often just automatically for you through AWS's way of doing things. So this user gets sent here, and now the gateway can be prepared for the next user. It will get this response, and then it will make sure this response from Lambda 1 goes to this user. And if another user comes in, they request from the gateway, they can send that request to any of the Lambdas that are currently open, or if there's one that was recently open and finished, send it there so you don't have to send all the code as well. The issue here is that this gateway brings the Lambdas to life through the request. And once the request is completed, once this response gets to the user, so on complete kill lambda one. Once the gateway finishes sending this response to this user, it now insta kills this box because it knows it doesn't need that anymore. That sucks if you do actually want this to be up for longer because it's doing something still like it's still has to send its logs out. If you don't want to have to wait for your logs to send to send a response to the user, this sucks because now the user gets a response slower or you just don't get those logs. Since Vercel doesn't use the AWS gateway for any of this now, they're using the Vercel function edge whatever the fuck. I'm sure they have some fancy name for this that I don't know. I'm sorry, guys. I know you pay me. You're not paying me for this video, though. I'm just talking about shit. The Vercel function layer here is smarter. And instead of just creating a one way binding, making sure that once this response is sent, they kill the box, they keep it open. They keep it open for a while because the way they send these things back and forth isn't traditional web requests. It's possibly WebSocket. I don't actually know what the protocol is for sending things from the Lambda back to their edge layer, but because they're handling this themselves, they can do some other protocol for sending data between their layer and Lambda so they can run this Lambda however they want and not worry about it dying. This is huge. This allows them a level of flexibility that you would have to build this layer yourself for otherwise. Could you build this layer yourself? Could you build your own queuing and management system for the top layer here? Absolutely, you could. It would just suck to do. And I would not want to be the one doing it because this shit is painful. And this is the stuff I pay for sell to avoid doing. Right now, they are cheap enough that I would never even consider otherwise. And while the pricing might seem expensive, when you consider how annoying building these types of things is that it takes some of the best engineers in the world years to get right, avoiding it's very nice. And that's why I'm hyped about this because I have so many real use cases like sending logs, like writing to my database after the fact, like generating an image, but wanting to send the user to the right place right after. It fundamentally changes the way that I think about my functions, where now my goal is to just get things running and get a response to the user as fast as possible. If you wanted this to block, like let's say we want this to block, you can still await traditionally. But if you ever have code that is asynchronous that you don't want to have to wait for, this model is awesome. It's really, really cool. I said before that I was going to show you Guillermo re-implementing RSC using wait until. And I forgot to do that because I didn't have Gabriel, my go-to guy there to remind me. Because of that, I'm recording it now. Here it is. 
I actually thought this was one of the coolest things I saw with wait until because wait until let's you start executing the code immediately, but then holds the thread until it's done. You can use that to stream in responses. So here is the code that he wrote. We have the confetti URL for embedding the confetti browser min.js file. So we're not even loading this as a package. We're loading this as a CDN embed. We have here export async function get readable, writable, new transform stream. And then we wait until and we stream the writable data because we're going to start streaming this response. We want to return a header ASAP. So here we return response with the readable attached because we're writing into that stream data there. We want to make sure that's going to be included. We're also going to send the headers with it. So now we start streaming the data. Writable, writable stream, the usual stuff here. We grab the writer because we're passing this. And then we immediately write the hello dot dot. And then we repeat this 1,024 times in order to have all that space there. It's another reason we'll get to in a second. And we have the await promise dot all new promise. We set this to resolve in 1.5 seconds. We fetch the confetti URL. And then we send this down as text because we're embedding this in a script tag here. We're putting this confetti from this promise here as part of the text of this script tag. Really simple, super cool. And this then streams in that part after immediately rendering this. We can go to the site and see, we immediately get the hello. And then the world appears with the confetti loaded in after a second and a half being streamed in from the server. That's so cool. There is no Next.js here. There is no React here. There is nothing special here. We're just streaming in updated HTML as time goes on. The really fun thing here that Michael pointed out, I see what you did there with the NBSP padding to get over the minimum length for Brotly and GZIP encoding and then to flush the first chunk. If you don't have enough content inside of a chunk, it doesn't just send. It waits till it has enough before sending. And by putting this 1,024 times, he brute forces it over that limit so it can both be minified with gzip and be sent to the user. Small hack, clever hack, great example overall. I think this is one of the coolest ways to see that this wait until stuff isn't just an XJS feature. It's a way that Vercel lets you manage a response as well as a written stream and play with these things together in really powerful ways. That's my thoughts on wait until. It solves a legitimate problem I have with Lambda, and I'm curious if it does for you guys as well. I'm excited for the top comment to be, why not just use a $5 VPS? So have at it, guys. Until next time, peace nerds.